Now uh, we're going to have a presentation by, uh, I would say, I will say our guru uh, of uh, visual arts. Uh, uh, so uh, Pavel Kotov uh, will give you some uh, really nice. Uh, will share his n uh, really great experience creating uh, an outstanding visual effects in Blend for Web. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pavel Kozov. Uh, I work here in Blender for App as a 3D generalist. Um, I've been working with Blender for around uh, seven years and I want to share some of my experience with you. Uh, aside from modeling, animating, uh, texturing, etc., uh, I often answer on our forums and people ask me, how can I get this or that effect um, with Blender for Web? So I go to our programmers, I ask them like, can we do it? Uh, please. <laughs> uh, and they say, well, it's not achievable for now and we have big things to do and maybe, maybe later. Um, and well, they are right, right? So, well, that means challenge accepted to me, you know. I use instruments and techniques we already have uh, to achieve effects that are not possible in Bonfo Web from the box. Uh, and some of our programmers started calling me the dark wizard uh, when they saw what uh, can be done using our engine. So if you can find something in the box, you need to think outside the box. That's what I'm going to tell you about today. Uh, how to use Blender and blend for Wave features in special cases to create interesting effects. The features that were not initially intended to be used this way. <coughs> uh, the first one is uh, not from our forums. Uh, I'm... Um, working on some uh, of Blend for Web projects uh, in my free time and I needed to create a fire, you know, that kind of uh, interesting uh, ghosty fire. Uh, well, a little spoiler, this will be a scene from Undertale. Uh, the fire made only uh, of particles wasn't enough for me and I needed something more interesting and flexible. So without further ado, let's look at the results. One, two, four. Perfect. All right. So we see here uh, two flames, two very different types of flames. But uh, actually, the effect uh, that made it all possible uh, is there is only one technique how to achieve this kind of effect. Well, let's recreate it right now. I will start from a scratch. I don't have anything. I just have my programs and the default cube. First, we need to uh, think about the shape of our flame. I, sub I subdivide it uh, twice. Uh, I apply it. Uh, and then I make uh, this kind of drop shape. All right, that will work. Done. Then I need to uh, UV unwrap it. Rear seams. Ah, sorry. Mark seam. Yes. <clears throat> unwrap. And we got uh, this kind of uh, UV map. Next, we need to make it uh, rectangular. For that, uh, we are uh, enabling uh, constraint to image bounds here, and we are turning on um, mm, uh, proportional editing. And we do this pretty easy. We need to be sure that uh, all of our vertices uh, are touching uh, the borders of the image. That's kind of important. Yes, something like that. Then we press Q, we press T, we select here uh, relax, and set the strength to something uh, like uh, 0 0.1. And then we just relax our UV mapping. 
Okay, done. It will work. Well, next step, we are making a texture. We are opening GIMP. We are creating a new file. Uh, we go to filters, um, render, clouds, uh, different clouds. Then we scale it up by Y size and uh, down by Y size and uh, up by X size. Uh, we want to achieve something like that. Also, we want to uh, set details, increase the details, and to make it tileable. All right. Uh, okay, that will work. Uh, maybe I want to play a little with um, levels. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. I export our texture on the desktop. I'll be going to flame. All right. Uh, then I open my texture, uh, my image, of course. Uh, and then I uh, need to create a texture. Uh, go away. A uh, new uh, flame, uh, and select our picture. Okay, we have a texture called flame. We don't need it right now. Uh, now let's create a uh, material. Uh, let's make it node material. Uh -huh. We don't need the node material. Uh, input texture and input geometry. We select here our UV map and our texture. Let's go to flame. Okay. Actually, let's uh, set here Java cell. All right. So we see here that that kind of result. Uh, now, um, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but uh, those uh, blue outputs, vector outputs, are also RGB, so we can separate it into channels and uh, mm, combine it back. And we can play with those channels. Uh, well, red uh, means uh, X, axis uh, green means y axis and blue means z axis all right what will happen if i add here a, a add math node something changed and if i scroll this value here as you can see the texture starts moving uh why does it happen uh this that's the similar effect if we uh, select here all our all the our um UV map and move it uh, by X axis. That's the same. We are just um, scrolling the texture through X axis into UV coordinates. All right, but we don't need to um, move flame uh, uh, horizontally. We need it to move vertically. So we need to use a green channel. All right, uh, we set it to subtract and it moves up. Okay. Uh, then uh, we we are adding here uh, the went for web time node. Uh, what will uh, this node do? Uh, this node will scroll this value for me uh, forever. Uh, it won't have any effect in um, Blender, but well, uh, it's uh, went for web node. In went for web, the results uh, will be. Uh, oh, let's see the results actually. Why not? Oh, sorry, sorry, I need to save the file and back the texture. All right. As you can see, the texture rises up. Uh, well, and you may ask me, uh, so what? <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's make it more interesting. First of all, uh, maybe you know that uh, 
the candle flame doesn't look like that. It's more like uh, this kind of shape. So we have here a transparent area. I'm sorry, I can draw with mouse. Uh, let's create it. We're gonna be using vectors. We need normal output and orco output. Okay, after the normal vector, uh, we need to add uh, two more nodes, uh, vector view and uh, mm, vector mapping. So let's see what we got here on the output of the blue channel. Well, it looks like nothing, but that's wrong. Because if I add uh, here mm, converter math, we can see something started uh, to appear. So now we have this kind of mask. It will be always uh, in the middle. Now well, it is interesting, but that's not what we want. So that's why uh, we need uh, here a mapping node. We now can control um, where the shape uh, will be. So I move, move it uh, down. I scale it a little bit here. And we have something like that. Interesting. Uh, well, also I want to add uh, this output. This is output from Orco, from Blue Channel as well. Uh, if we add a node, add here, we can control it. As you can see, it, uh, these techniques of uh, controlling vectors is really awesome. You can play with them and get uh, so many results. It's just, just unbelievable. All right, let's uh, add one mask to another. And now we have this kind of shape. We can control it this way and that way. Uh, and now everything we need uh, is to uh, combine this output and that output. Uh, I found out that the better way is to use uh, divide. Divide uh, this by that. Okay, and now we uh, need to play a bit more uh, with uh, those uh, settings. Maybe I'll add a multiply node here uh, so we can uh, uh, make it brighter or dimmer. Also, I can add another multiply node here for the same purpose. Yeah, I want something like that. All right, let's see what we have now. Well, it looks more interesting, maybe. So let's uh, make it interesting, really. All right, let's add some real flame. We're setting alpha to zero, we're deleting all, all the outputs, and we are adding uh, the node uh, blend for web glow output. That's what will work for us. All right, the color. Which color do you want, somebody? Re green, all right, let's make it green. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, green it is. I'll also add uh, a plane here. And uh, I'll set the lamp to be a uh, uh, green color also. Okay. Mm. Ah, of course, I need to set it to add. A blender can deal with add, uh, tech, with, with add uh, transparency type, uh, but they are saying that they, they will work with it. Okay. And we got this kind of result. It's not that interesting um, as I showed earlier, but well, uh, it is just a primitive. Uh, so I, you saw, I just did it from a scratch without having anything, just some notes. It may be look a little bit difficult, but believe me, it's not. You play uh, for some hours with it and um, you will do it automatically. Uh, you just, uh, 
just go and play with it. It's cool, really. Okay, uh, then I want to increase the speed of my flame going up. What I do, uh, here is blend for web time node, and after blend for web time, I add a, a multiply node, and this will uh, work as a uh, speed node. Uh, here the value uh, shows 0 0.5, it means um, the speed will be uh, twice as slow. And if I set it to 2, it will go up twice as fast. Let's see. Just to compare before, after. Okay, that's it. Uh, after uh, playing a bit uh, more with vectors, I was able uh, to create uh, those effects. Also, I uh, animated uh, the meshes uh, themselves, so they are, you know, like dancing, like the real frame uh, do. And also I added uh, texture, uh, uh, some particles, as you can see, uh, for the smoke. And also, uh, thanks goes to uh, Ivan, who uh, helped me um, uh, with uh, adding a new feature into blend for web um, He added a tilt for billboarding. So uh, when uh, the emission starts, uh, all our billboards will um, are rotated. Uh, I can set all the billboards to be rotated uh, randomly. So each time uh, the random uh, rotation will appear and well, uh, the flame uh, will look more naturally. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Whew. And ooh, I'm getting a little thirsty here. But lucky me, we have an oasis in uh, in the middle of the desert. <laughs> uh, you know, the sun rages so terribly. Oh, but look at this water. It just plays. Actually, why does it play? Uh, it's not uh, the specular, the blender specular, we know. Uh, you know, it's uh, shining with little dots around it. What is going on? Uh, here is uh, this magical uh, scroller. If we uh, set it to zero, up. Well, it became boring. <laughs> well, and if we increase it, uh, the uh, speaker starts to play and the sign starts uh, shining. All right, uh, that's uh, more better uh, of the example of thinking outside the box because uh, that boom effect, it was initially um, added to simulate the lack of human eye. Um, you know when you were in in the dark place for a long time and you go out into the uh, bright uh, bright uh, well outsides <laughs> um, uh, the sun just uh, is uh, rushing into your eyes it's brightening you everything you see is just a blank white color something like that uh, that's w what uh, this effect was initially made for and of course, uh, nobody thought that it can be used uh, to simulate the, that playful um, sparkliness of water on, on the sun. But I tried it, I liked it, so I did it. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, maybe you noticed uh, that effect of uh, hot air going up. Uh, uh, some years ago, maybe uh, you know, you saw it, you watched it, uh, Andrew Price uh, did uh, this effect, uh, he applied it uh, using uh, composite nodes, so it was like post-processing. Well, and um, I reworked it a bit um, to for it to work with um, uh, with our engine. I suppose. Let's uh, see um, how have I how I achieved it. You see, just right in front of a camera, we have this uh, plane. Uh, this plane is transparent. I set it to a pack to show the results. Uh, it has uh, two um, normal maps. 
One is this kind of wavy neural maps, and other uh, is very, very little. Uh, it's uh, the normal map of a sand, you know, something like sand, sand. And I am using the textures of uh, this wavy, uh, vectors of this wavy normal map, and I put it uh, here into the uh, mapping of the uh, noise texture mixing it with uh, UV coordinates. And that's what we got. Look at the screen. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. That's how it works. You see this wavy texture is distorted. Is it? Can you see it? Right. Uh, so uh, the one normal map is distorting uh, another normal map. And I really liked how it uh, looked like, so I implemented it as well. And after uh, this, I just play a little bit more with vectors uh, and uh, set uh, the result into our Blend for Web Refraction node. What a Refraction node does, uh, it uh, takes all the scene behind the refraction object and uh, distorts it using the normal map uh, that was put into it. Uh, so that's, ah, I close it. So that's how you get uh, uh, this kind of interesting, interesting effect of this uh, hot air going up. All right. Moving on. Oh, and actually, uh, can I go, do I have internet here? Uh -huh. uh, on Chinese forums, uh, one man asked me uh, this question. I think you may understand what's going on here. Um, he asked me if uh, this can be achieved in blend for web Well, of course, first I went to our programmers, asked them, and they said, well, maybe one day, we don't know. <laughs> so I tried to create it, and I was really shocked how easy it is. I just said, and the effect was done in like 20 minutes. I just have, you know, that kind of random thought in my mind, and it actually worked, and I loved it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see how it works. Here is a turtle I made like a year or more ago, and if we press this button, hop, here you can see uh, the uh, fully shaded uh, material, here you can see uh, vectors output, uh, here you can see the uh, specular mask output, and uh, here uh, in, on the right uh, is um, diffuse texture, uh, shadeless material. How did, how have I done it? Here is the thing, uh, the view output from camera, uh, from no geometry. It will be um, like the um, camera camera coordinates, view coordinates. Let's separate uh, those vectors, and as we can see, um, the uh, red uh, channel uh, gives us uh, the horizontal mask. The green channel will give us vertical mask. You see, it doesn't matter how. Uh, how much I uh, rotate the view, it always uh, will stay the same. It uh, because it uh, depends on uh, from where you look at it. And if I add red and green channels, I have a diagonal mask. And if I add another add node here, I can control it. And finally, if I add here 
greater than note I can set a sharp mask and it will work for every angle so that's how I did it I will show here the uh, here are three masks that I used one two and three I just use those masks to uh, uh, mix the outputs here is normals output here is specular output and here is diffuse output and of course the uh, shaded material output it all mixes using those masks and that's all that's that's so easy, really. <laughs> so yeah, that is what I wanted to show you today. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. So uh, guys who have questions, some artists here? No artists, everyone is a programmer. Okay. Uh, Misha, do we have online questions? No. Uh, okay, uh, then thanks, pa thanks Pavel. All right. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, you have a question. Oh. One, two. Yeah, it works. I'm actually a programmer and uh, it's really impressive how you can experiment. Maybe you can mention some uh, like uh, valuable areas for experiments like these vectors, uh, masks uh, or other areas which is more valuable for you as experiment experimenter, uh, experimentator with this stuff inside 3D sense uh, textures and so on. Oh, well, um, you know, I actually made a little. Uh, uh, go here. I made here. Uh, I made here a little. Uh, mm things with which I can manipulate. I can say this and that. And actually you can uh, program those things so you can instantly uh, achieve that effect through coding. For example, in the game uh, you are pressing something, it says, hey, make this value bigger, and it makes it. Or make this value smaller, and it makes it. So, um, uh, for me, come on. So for me, uh, it is, um, yes, I really like to play uh, with this, and uh, I think uh, programmers uh, may uh, do it as well, uh, but maybe in different kind of uh, situations. I actually um, consult, uh, consult a lot with our programmers when I play with vectors because sometimes uh, happens some crazy stuff, that, and I absolutely don't understand what's going on. And then the programmer said, uh, uh, sits uh, near me and he says, well, you see, this one goes here. And this one goes here. And I, ah, oh, of course. So yeah, uh, it's really, it's like a whole new world of possibilities uh, to, to play with, to achieve. Do you ever try touch designer for experiment with real uh, real time rendering or you don't use it? Uh, touch sorry? designer. Touch designer, no. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Ah, okay. Oh. <coughs> Maybe it's a question for our uh, Uh, maybe it's a question for our leaders. No, I will um, ask it. Can you make the blend file available online? Especially the desert sand with the heat effect is excellent. Uh, so, as I understand uh, that uh, they want to to open source it to share, or to share it. Yeah, um, sure. I think I can share it. No problems. 
That's it. Any more questions? And actually, this one file is um, I prepared it, so all the textures are packed in, and it's uh, I arranged notes in a way that it will be um, easy to understand where something goes because sometimes no trees are like totally mess and you don't know how to deal with them. With those big no trees, uh, did you ever uh, encounter limitations in performance like for shaders for the bloom and the reflection and the refraction uh, overlaying all these no tr all these trees or these nodes? didn't uh, mm -hmm. block you uh, on some low performances PC or? Uh All right, I understand, yeah. Actually, uh, the thing that we are dealing with um, uh, real-time rendering, uh, it is itself a, a pretty big um, limitation. So we need to be tricky. We uh, need to think how can I di get this effect to work but not using uh, using the um, initial um, initial stuff because that stuff is not you know it's not real time. So yes, um, it is uh, kind of well. Um, if you think uh, enough, uh, if you play enough with it, uh, uh, you can achieve the results that you uh, didn't think you can achieve. So for example, those flames, I. I really didn't think that they will turn out like that. I, I was trying to do something more, um, how you say it, uh, more ordinary, more uh, easier, and it kind of happened. And I was wow, I want to uh, to save it. <laughs> so yeah, um, you have some limitations, but. Um, Dealing with these limitations give you gives you you know that kind of um, trickery working brain, and you can achieve another effects that will be that maybe uh, will look even better than you thought at first place. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Some more questions? Nope. No. Uh, right. Okay, then thanks, Pavel. That looks like magic for me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, and good luck in thinking outside the box.